Welcome into the K0LWC Ham Shack. If you're not, don't forget to subscribe by clicking that button in the lower right corner. That way you can get more great ham radio videos in the future, including more videos on the FT5D that are coming, including an in-depth review. Now today I'm really, really nervous. Like really nervous. And that's because we are testing the IPX7 rating on the Yaesu FT5D. A lot of people asked me when I did the announcement video when this radio was first announced and we looked at the spec sheet, why should I get this radio? What's so different than the FT3D? What's the big selling point? Well, it is this. The IPX7 rating means that this radio should be submersible down to three feet for 30 minutes. Now, on older Yaesu HTs, they used to actually advertise submersible, which they don't anymore in terms of using that language. But again, that is exactly what IPX7 is. So should we go ahead and dunk this brand new radio in this water? Uh, okay, let's do it. Ha! Ah. All right, is it still gonna work? Let's take a closer look. Oh, my heart is racing. Here is the Yezu 5TD underwater. Uh, and yeah, I'm kind of nervous. So the first thing that people were wondering is, would the touchscreen work when it comes out of the water, when it's all wet? How does the speaker sound? And I've had other submersible HTs before and again, audio quality does suffer, but can it still work? I wonder if it's still gonna be able to receive. I mean, it should be, right? Well, let's give it a shot. Uh, K0LWC. <laughs> Oh, that's cool. There's bubbles coming out of the speaker as I uh, vibrate the uh, element inside of there. That's awesome. K0LWC on uh, 146410 Simplex. I can actually hear it. You guys probably can't hear it on the video. <laughs> that's really cool. I'm making the radio bubble. Um, so again, this should be good for three feet of water for 30 minutes. That is what an IPX7 rating is. Keep in mind that high jets of water, like if you were to take this to a car wash and spray it with a high pressure uh, hose gun, that does not mean that it's gonna be able to withstand really high pressure. So just keep that in mind. But rain, dropping it in water, you accidentally drop it in the lake or the river when you're out hiking, uh, this will have no problem whatsoever. And the rubber on the outside of the radio should give it a lot more drop resistance than what we've seen in some of the other radios. But what happens when we take it out? How does it sound? Does the screen still work? Things like that. Well, let's go ahead and carefully take it out because I don't think my ICOM 7300 is uh, IPX7. So there we have it. Let's take it out and uh, water dripping here off onto the shack. And all right, does the screen work? Oh yeah, no problem whatsoever. Screen still works really nice. Uh, typically what I find if you kind of go like this and also blow into the speaker, help get some of that excess water off, that really helps. Let's do that right here. You're not gonna be able to see it. So there we go, just took some of the water out. Uh, let's go ahead and make another call here on Simplex. K0, oh yeah, no problem whatsoever, still coming through. Just turn this down. Uh, K0LWC on 146410. So uh, again, you can hear that there's still some water lodged in there, but you can still you know, make a copy on whatever someone's saying. Uh, you might have to crank it up a little higher, uh, but it's no problem whatsoever. Uh, let's go ahead and transmit. And if you keep an eye back here on the Kenwood D710 on 146.410, we'll see if uh, it's able to come through and still transmit. Uh, K0LWC on 146.410. Yeah, no problem, full scale. And uh, let's just turn this on get a little audio from it, make sure that the microphone can still work. Uh, K0LWC on 146.410. All right, so yep, still absolutely working. Uh, sounding great. Again, it definitely muffled the audio a little bit uh, with the water being in and around this mic case area. So uh, you may have to speak a little louder, you might have to up your mic gain. Let's go ahead and try that and just see if that makes a difference when we actually go back to wanting to transmit on this radio. So let's go ahead and go into the full menu. All right, now let's go to TXRX, let's go to our audio, let's go to mic gain, and let's just up it to see if we have to compensate. Let's put it up to a seven, uh, given that again, that there's water in that microphone area right now. Let's try this again and see if we can get a little bit better sound out of it. Uh, K0LWC on 146410. Yep. So when this is waterlogged and you're trying to use it right away again, obviously as it dries out, it'll get better, but you might have to up the mic gain a little bit and get really close 
to the microphone uh, to make it a usable signal for the person on the other side of the conversation. So again, the Azu FT5D, submersible, IPX7, we'll call that K0LWC verified. Again, don't forget to subscribe, hit that like button. If you have any questions, drop me a comment. I'm having an in-depth review coming out soon on this radio. I've been going through testing a bunch of stuff, so that is gonna be coming out shortly. You don't wanna miss that review. Uh, again, drop a comment if you have a question. I'll catch you again next time.